All right, it's time to move on and build our arm assembly. All right, we're gonna get started with our servo claw assembly, which goes at the end of our arm as one configuration potential that you can build with this kit. We're gonna start with our RevSmart robot servo. We have our preloaded servo bracket from before. We're gonna need four M3 by eight millimeter hex head cap screws, as well as the M3 nylock nuts that pair with them to mount the servo to the bracket. We have our 120 millimeter plastic brackets here with two 16 millimeter long M3 hex caps head screws, as well as the nylock nuts to match these, so they can attach to each other. We also have our orange servo horn here. This is the aluminum servo horn. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So we're gonna take our servo and go to mount this. Now, you can mount it a couple different ways, but we're gonna start with the bracket facing this way and we're gonna put the servo in it like this. Now you have to come from the top, and so what I like to do is fish the PWM line through first, and then when you come up to put the servo in, tilt it down so that you're not damaging that cord at all, and then you should be able to just rock it into place. And once it's in place, it looks good, it's lined up. It's the orientation we want it. We have our eight millimeter hex cap screws we're gonna put in from the top and we're gonna need some nuts on the bottom. So I'm actually going to float the nut on the bottom and then bring the screw to it. And I might need to just back it off a little bit and then go to retighten. And I think I've got it started. So I'm just gonna start all four of them. So again, I'm gonna float the nut and, oh, and try and hold it in place the best I can. And then bring the bolt through. And in this case, I'm actually gonna use my nut driver just to help start this even. And then I'm gonna come to this side and do the same. In this case, I'm actually going to use the nut driver on the nut side to get it started. And this one will float. Rotate it on me a little bit there. Hold it in place. Take the screw from the other side. Start it in. And then now, to tighten these down evenly, we're going to take our open-ended wrench and we're going to put it on the nut and then from the other side we're going to use the nut driver just to tighten it up. Again, not too tight. You're just snugging it up. And so we're putting this on this side and holding it. It can help to push it against the surface. And then we're bringing our nut driver in on this side and tightening it, just snugging it really. You never want to go too tight. Okay, and so these are all snugged up now, and that servo's in there held in place. All right, so I set that aside. We're now going to take our two 120 degree brackets. We are going to lay them on top of each other like this. So you can see that the ridges are on this side and on this side, and their two flat faces are against each other. And we're going to line them up so their holes are lined up. And I'm actually gonna line it up like that. So you can see the holes are lined up. We're now gonna take our 16 millimeter screws and put, I'm gonna put both through actually. That'll just keep it lined up and then flip it around. And I'm actually using my index finger and another finger to hold this down. It can be your middle or ring. And I'm just holding these screws kind of in place so they won't rotate too easily when I start these nylock nuts on the other side. And we are gonna tighten this all the way down. So it is a little bit harder to do this because you're gonna be fighting that nylon all the way down to be tight. 
but unfortunately the eight millimeters are a little too short, so we do need to utilize these. I'm actually gonna take my box end wrench, put it on the hex cap screw, take my nut driver on the, the nylock nut, and then tighten down. And this does take a little bit longer than most of them, and you don't wanna go too tight, but you just wanna snug that up. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this one. So I'm just holding that in place, getting it on there, and then keeping the wrench from rotating, as well as the part. And I don't wanna to go too fast and over tighten it, so I just wanna snug it up. And there we go. It's snugged up and that section's built. We're now gonna take our Rev orange aluminum servo horn, and it has a spline here that will actually go on to the servo spline here. So we're gonna take the non-spline side, the more flat side, and we're gonna take this bracket and we're actually gonna line it up. And using two M3 by eight millimeter screws, we're gonna go through this hole and this hole. And we're just gonna line it up right here. So basically you're gonna find the two threaded holes that make sense. And again, this can also be adjusted. This, this orange servo horn allows you to have a lot of different mounting places. You can adjust this claw to have additional parts or, or built, built however you want it. And this is just kind of our starting spot. And from there, you need to adjust depending on what your challenge is. All right, so we have this assembled and we're now going to go ahead and push this onto the servo. Now, a good note about servos is when you first power them on, they're gonna find their zero spot. So you may want to you know, plan ahead and know that this will get powered on before this final position is set. So you might wanna pull this off, let the zero and then push it on or adjust it later. But the beauty is we're, we're just gonna press it on for now and we can always pull it off and adjust it to the right position later or make mechanical changes if we need to as well. So with the servo like so, I'm going to put it on approximately here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this side and I'm gonna bring this spline together and you might need to rotate it just a little bit until it, it'll just kind of start to sit in. And then once it goes, you should be able to push it in and it'll push in and it'll have a little bit of a gap, which is fine but that's all it holds it in. So this can come off. There is a opportunity to put a screw in here and solidly lock it down, but unless you're doing something a little ridiculous with it, this should hold it no problem and allows you to easily and quickly adjust it. So there is our servo claw. Moving on to our limit switch bumper assembly, you're gonna need a 120 degree plastic bracket as well as an inside corner bracket, 16 millimeter M3 screws as well as eight millimeter long M3 screws, the hex caps with the nylock nuts. Uh, we're gonna start with our 120 degree bracket and you'll notice that there are ridges on one side. So we're gonna make sure that the hex cap screw head is on that side. So we're using our eight millimeter screws. I'm gonna go ahead and put it like so. Ridges are on this side. In the very last hole, I'm gonna put the eight millimeter screw and just go ahead and preload this nylock nut. And then I'm gonna to go to the very center hole, kind of in the apex of the there, and I'm just gonna put it from the other side again. There are no ridges in that center section, but that doesn't matter right now. But just so you know, there, there are no ridges here. Um, which doesn't make it a little easier, honestly, but now it's preloaded. Okay, and with that preloaded, we're now gonna take our inside corner bracket and we are going to put it on the side that has our two nylock nuts, like so. And then we're gonna take our long 16 millimeter screws and we're going to just line these up and pass them through. And I'm gonna go ahead and put both through for now to start. Actually, and I'm actually gonna put on the very last holes. So you see, I'm gonna put it here. So it's gonna send a little bit down further. This is the limit switch bracket because this foot will actually engage with our touch sensor. 
So with the last two holes here, I'm going to hold these screws from the other side and just use these posts sticking out the other way to get these nylock nuts started. And once those are started, I'm going to take our open-ended wrench and hold down on the nylock nut, rotate it around, and using the 5.5 millimeter nut driver, drive the screw into the nut. This will take a little more muscle because they are the longer screws, but they are needed because the eight millimeters would be a little too short. And you can see it's kind of been snugged up now. I'm gonna now do the other one. Same thing, open-ended wrench on the nylock nut. Get the nut driver on the screw and tighten down. And again, we're just snugging this up. And there we go. And now that's held in place. And that looks good. Okay, we're gonna continue on with the arm assembly. We have our servo assembly, as well as our end limit switch assembly here. And this is our 15 millimeter extrusion, 420 millimeter length. So a really long piece. And we're gonna start by taking the servo and sliding it onto this extrusion. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna position it. And again, this is, this is variable depending on what your application is, what your challenge is, what you're trying to accomplish. But we're gonna place it approximately so that the, the claw of the arm is going to pinch whatever object against the aluminum extrusion. So I'm going to put it about at the end here. And again, you can adjust this, change the claw, etc. Once we're in our about rough position and I kind of know where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and, and just take off the servo horn and set it aside. I'm then going to bring our open-ended wrench in and I'm going to tighten these nylock nuts until it starts to get tight. And once it's it's tight and it's not able to move. I'm gonna loosen this, this first one so we can still move. I'm gonna bring this one in, make sure this one gets tight. And then once it can't move, I'm gonna loosen it a little bit again. Okay, so we can still move, but they're pretty close to being tight. So now I'm gonna take my servo horn and just very loosely replace it. Position it exactly where I want it. And I want it, you know, about there, so that looks good. And I'm going to bring the open end wrench. I'm going to tighten this back nut. So I'm going to tighten this one down. Okay, and that's nice and snug now. The servo's not moving. I'm now going to remove the servo horn again and tighten this front one. Okay, so now the servo's not going anywhere. I can now replace the servo horn with approximately where I think it will be. And you might need to adjust this again after you turn it on. But that's about where I want it. And so that's good, and we can adjust it later as always. We're now gonna take our limit switch foot and basically put that on the opposite side of the servo. And we're gonna slide in the two preloaded screws. And essentially, as the arm comes down into the robot, this is going to contact a switch. And that will stop, tell the robot to stop moving the arm downward. So for now, I'm just going to loosely place this and just snug it up enough so it won't move, but we're definitely going to have to adjust this once we get it on the robot. Um, and you'll see that as we get there. So that's good for now. The servo's in place, and we're ready now to bring this arm to the robot. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the robot in here. And we're going to bring the arm side over. And you'll see that we have our two preloaded screws ready to go on that gear. And so we're going to take the arm with the servo facing down like this, bring the extrusion up, and we're going to, I'm going to hold the nylock nut on the other side to help line up these guys, and just slide that first in. Rotate it to slide it up with the second. And now, we need to determine approximately where we want our arm to be. And really, that's, that's up to you. In our case, we're gonna put it, this wire out of the way. If I can rotate it slightly, I'm gonna place this about here-ish. 
And again, I'm going to adjust this later, and you will likely need to adjust it significantly, all depending on what you're trying to get your armor mechanism to do. So I'm just tightening these two on the big gear, and that will keep this extrusion in place for now, and that roughly places the arm down here. Now, the arm is still pretty high off the ground. So if you're dealing with smaller objects, you might need to slide this whole assembly down. You might need to slide the servo down. You might need to change up the way you're your, you have an implementation here. You might change your, your claw, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of variables to what you're going to do down here. That completes the arm assembly of the robot. And we'll now move on to the next step, final assembly.